This is a story about tech history and what happens to the people of an industry that gets disrupted. Let me give you a little bit of context. Before the internet, before satellite communication, radio was big business. And at one point in our history, sending a message via telegram, or more specifically, Morse code, brought in a lot of money. The telegraph wire tied the cattle markets of Kansas to the tables of the East. Other methods of communication were slow and tedious. The telegraph was the only means of rapid communication. This is the network of interconnecting high-speed message centers linking together the vast Western Union system from coast to coast. Yes, we call it Speedway for Words. It was this communication network that built the radio stations that at one point riddled the California coastline. As soon as satellite communication became cheaper than paying radio operators, these stations became obsolete and were quickly sold, demolished, and scavenged for parts. So satellite communication goes back several decades now, enormously expensive, $10 a minute for a call when we first started in, in Marset. But that price started to come down and that curve continued to descend and the curve of expense of paying live radio operators started to go up. And eventually when those curves cross, that was it. Because now all the ships have, uh, of course, satellite connections. The people on board are connected to the internet. That's what they expect. They see messages as email like you and I would on their laptop computers. So that was really the thing that killed the industry. We had the last day of Morse on July 12th, 1999. And it was one of the most emotional things I've ever seen. You see these guys, these grizzled guys, I mean, tough looking old birds who had spent their lives at sea. They had seen everything they'd done. The guy who you'd never mess with in the bar, right? And they're weeping. I mean, it's just beeps in the air. That's all Morse code is, that's it. And yet it was so impactful and emotional to these people because here they're seeing their career, their, their way of life, their skills disappearing. This is the end. Yeah, that's what Jack was saying. It's a pure RFI proof uh, building. Helps out on that microwave. And what happens, the uh, ship calls in and uh, you just have these guys waiting? Yeah, this is... A so uh, when the ship calls in, you just uh, send it out? Yeah. That's what we're talking about, the uh, eventually developing a mailbox system. Or yeah, with MCI mail. Yeah. And they can call in and just pull it out yeah. just like we do. Right. Just north of Silicon Valley, KPH is harbored by the Point Reyes National Seashore where it was protected from demolition only. After Operation shut down, KPH was left abandoned for years. When did the station shut down official operations? It shut down on June 30th, 1997. Uh, station manager at that time was Jack Martini, and he was on the phone right over here in this corner, coordinating with the station that had taken over the license. One by one, the silence, the, the circuits were silent here, and they were transferred over to this competing company who had bought out this one. And you could just see the emotion in his face, and you could see how here he is at the end of his career. It's the end of the thing that defined him, because this was the end of the line. It used to be that you could take your license and your telegraph key, go off to the next station, get a job, no problem. This was the end. The emotional impact was such that I could not face coming back here for two years because I knew what I would see because I'd seen it so many times before at stations that had gone off the air, which is to say the place is trashed. Uh, everything is gone, wire sticking out of the walls. There's, for some reason, there's always a broken chair and one shoe and that's it. That's what you see. And I could not face it. Notice to all ships, this will be the last traffic list transmitted from the KPH Point Reyes Bolinas facilities. The manager and staff wish all of you 73 88. That means best wishes 
88 means 11 kisses. June 30th, 1997. So that was it. After that day, KPH shut its doors never to open again. What's left here is a museum. A museum maintained by a few radio men who keep it alive out of love, out of a memory of a time that is gone. We talk about disruption like it's a great thing all the time, like every industry needs to be disrupted. Disruption has an effect, and it's an effect on people who built their lives around a technology, a profession, a skill. KPH now stands as a memorial to the radio men and women who stood over the airways and played such an important role in what was the internet of its day. So if you have a chance, come by on the weekends and say hi to Richard Dillman and the other guys that are keeping this history alive. I know it's overly sentimental. Maybe not so much a news story, but maybe just a love story to a piece of technology, to an industry that's no longer around. The place is under guard. There's a guard at the door because it hasn't been transferred over to the park service yet. So I say, look, I'm a radio man. I'm coming in. So make it easy on everybody. Please open it. A very nice guy, open the door. So we walk down the main hallway out here, and as we approach the Morse code operating room, we start hearing Morse code, and we start hearing static, and ships are calling, still using Morse code. And I'm still getting goosebumps right now because it was the spookiest thing, because we know the joint is closed for two years, so how can this be? Walk into the operating room, and it was like they had left 20 minutes ago. The telegraph key is still on the table, Coffee cups still on the table. Okay, now the coffee cups have three or four flies in them, but still, coffee cups on the table. But most poignantly, the receivers intentionally left on, keeping a symbolic watch over the airwaves. The last thing they did before turning out the lights and walking away. We saw that, and we just said, thank you very much, here's our life's work. You know, hand it to you. Because here's the ears in Point Reyes still living, the voice in Bellinas, dark and cold, but existing. So all we had to do was convince the Park Service that this was worth doing, and we were the guys to do it, and we're still amazed to this day that they bought our story for some reason, and we haven't turned back. selection procedure, our qualification for membership is very strict. It's that you gotta show up, and if you show up, you're in. That's it. I mean, you can't recruit for this. People have to sort of find you. And once they do, and they see what's here, then uh, they just keep coming back. See if I get on this yeah. no, when, when Marconi and all the pioneers were, were working on original radio communications, they called it wireless because the whole technology up to that point was wires. Okay, wireline telegraphy. This is wireless. So now all of the internet dweebs that are using radio frequencies to communicate without wires, they've invented something called wireless. All right, Wi-Fi is wireless. Well, that was an obsolete term 70 years ago. Except now it's been reinvented by the internet guys that don't want to understand the history of technology.